Hello guys and thanks for joining the presentation today on Creo for Industrial Designers. My name is Bill and today is May 4th, 2022. Okay. So the objective is really to take a look at the creativity that's allowed within Creo um, for industrial design. Um, so we'll take a look at free form sculpting, rendering and key shot and see how that all ties together. We'll do a live demonstration, Q&A. A little bit about me. So I have a background in industrial design, rendering, additive manufacturing. And of course, again, my name is Bill. As far as us as a company, uh, PDS Vision, um, some of you guys may know us formally as Boundary Systems. We are a tech leader and we're the first PTC global reseller and preferred services provider. And we have, so, we have software solutions developed for design and manufacturing. Capabilities of ours include consulting, implementation services, professional training, cloud, and we also have a help desk. So we were formed around you know, 2006 in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, PDS Vision Group was founded in Stockholm, Sweden between 2007 and 8. Um, around 2009, Boundary became a preferred windshield partner. And then we expanded between 2013 and 14 into South Africa. And around 2017 and 18, PDS, PDS Vision Group acquired us. And more recently between 2019 and 20, uh, PDS Vision Group acquired NET in Germany. Some software solutions that we provide are the PTC software suite, of course. Uh, we also provide services for Moldex 3D, Tacton, Xformation, Etrage, Sigmaxim, Keyshot, which we'll talk about today, ITI, and Samerics. So getting right into it, so this industrial design presentation today focuses more on the concept development stage of ID. So in the very top left, we see that we have a um, motorcycle that was modeled with Creo Freestyle. Um, below that image to the bottom left there is the um, raw import of the Creo bike into Keyshot. And then the image to the right is, a, um, is, a, is the same bike, except that we've applied materials to it and adjusted the lighting a little bit. All right, so let's not waste too much time and let's get right into this demo right now and let's switch to Creo. Okay, so right now you can see that we are currently in the freestyle environment in Creo. And like I said before, this really allows you a very fluid, flexible way of designing um, and sculpting. Uh, this, this bike right here took me about a, a full day to complete. So, you know, if you think about that, that's not too much time to really kind of flesh out your, your overall idea of what you want your product to kind of you know look like and appear so um, that's what we have here and then the nice thing about this is that basically with sculpting in this tool we have faces we have the points and edges right so um, from here if I want to make a quick change for example to this fuel tank I can grab just box select these points and then drag upward and then change the shape of that, right? So very, very fluid and it's very easy to make a change to your model. And then same thing back here, right? If I wanna go ahead and I wanna grab like the seat, for example, maybe pull that back a little bit more, and, you know, create, create some more room. I can grab these and I can pull that back a little bit and extend that out if I wanted to, right? You may even say, hey, these handlebars up, up here need, need to extend or I have to pull, pull them back. And you can always go in there and you can select them and then move them, right? If you want to, I can take, take that and move that out if I want to, right? So it's very easy to kind of quickly sculpt in here. So let's just do just a you know brief example. Say that we want to actually create like an exhaust pipe. So what you're working with here in, in freestyle really are just primitive shapes that you're going to use to create your, your mesh. So in this case, I may say, hey, you know, for, in, for an exhaust pipe, it makes sense to start not with a sphere, you know, not with a cube or a torus, but to start with a cylinder. So in this case, I would just go right up here to the shapes, grab my shape, then bring that in. You can see that it's going to come in here pretty, pretty large, um, but I can easily go in here and scale this down. Let me move it over here first, translate it. I can come in here, scale that down pretty quickly. 
get that where I need it. And I could also go back to translate and move it and position it so I can translate it to the left. I can move it forward a little bit, rotate it. Then at, at this point, I can really start to extrude. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this out a bit further and I'm gonna grab this front face, for example. So I'll select just that face and I'll extrude that face outward. And you can see as I do that, I wanna kind of follow the contour of my bike. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that in, rotate it a little bit. And then at, at this point, I wanna keep on ex extending this exhaust pipe to make it longer. So we'll extrude it out and just like before, I'll push it back, rotate it in position to make sure that this face is pointing where it needs to for my next extrusion. So once I have that moved, I can go ahead and right click again and extrude that, all right? So I'm gonna keep on kind of doing that until I get a position where I want it. Let me pull that in a bit more here. Rotate that. Maybe we'll just do one more here or a couple more. like that okay now this is obviously pretty pretty big so it's not to scale what's nice though is that it's it's pretty easily to start it's pretty easy to start to tweak this thing so if i want to i can grab that shape three right here i can right click and say hey you know what i want to show only this part that i'm creating then at this point i can go in here and i can even just box select all these and say hey you know i want to scale just this geometry I'm gonna go into my scale mode and then scale this down like that. I might wanna scale it here as well. So let's take that geometry and scale that down. I might wanna pinch that even more there. Okay. Then once I have that, I can go back to my view of the total of the whole bike. Right, and you can see I, I already have an, an exhaust created. So I'm gonna right click and hide the one that I'm doing now. And you can see that this one up here is the one that I started before, right? I can even just move the whole thing. So if I select shape 11, it's gonna grab that whole mesh right there. I can pull that down and scale it. I can translate it down. So I can right click again, go to translate. I can pull that down a little bit. If I want, I could even mirror this. So if I have this at the point where I want it or just close, I wanna kind of conceptualize how it looks, you know, wrapped around the bike, for example, I can select that and mirror it across the plane. And what's nice about this is that you can see up here that we have dependent mirror selected. And basically what that allows us to do is just work on one side of the bike. You can imagine that if I had a sculpt on both sides for all the different components that make this bike up, it would take a long time. But the, but the save time, if we have the mirror function enabled, I can go in here and if I wanted to you know, take this face, for example, and extend that outward like that, you can see that I'm not only doing it on the, the front side, but also extending it now on that back side as well. And you can see that update in real time, okay? Say, say for example, for whatever reason, uh, just for the, the render and, and key shot, you're like, hey, I need to show this, these two exhausts merge together. If I deselect that dependent mirror, I can grab this face, that face, and I can say connect. And now, now those are connected, okay? You know, I can also make some insets here and little little cuts as well. So say that I wanted you know, an impression on the fender back here, you know, I could take this face, and we'll grab four of these here. I can right click and say, hey, you know what? There should be an inset there. Maybe you want a little storage compartment somewhere, a little one. Um, I can inset the faces in. Right click and say extrude. Then I can pull it not up, I can pull it down into the model a little bit and create that little compartment there for storage if you need to. So it's a real, real quick, quick way, as you can see, like I talked about in the beginning, to kind of conceptualize and flesh out designs that you come up with. All right. Okay, so once once I have that, I can click OK. So it might just take a second here to regenerate in Creo. 
okay, great. So you can see we have two that kind of overlap each other. But uh, one, one other thing I want to show, and you, you can also shell these out too as well. So if I go to quilt, you know, I, I can select my quilt here. I might want to go back in there and kind of get, get rid of the other one, but you can solidify it. Um, you can thicken it so you can actually remove this front surface here, thicken that surface to kind of get that solid um, tube shape. Now, in this case, you can see that I don't have an assembly created. If I had an assembly, I wouldn't have to color all these surfaces here, right? The reason why they're, they're colored is because all this was created in part mode. And um, I have a bunch of geometry in this freestyle feature. So if, if it's not an assembly per se, or they're not bodies, like you can create the bodies in Creo, you know, starting in Creo 7 onward, if they're just kind of just, you're conceptualizing, you're moving like quickly, you're moving fast, and you're just in freestyle mode, pulling in spheres, pulling in cylinders or cubes and kind of sculpting, in order for you to designate and, and specify materials for a surface, you have to first color them in, in Creo like you see here. Once they're their own individual color, you can apply a, a specific material to that color. So this is what I've done. I've gone in here and, and sculpted that in freestyle, colored what I want to add a material to or a shade or two. And then once I have that, I'm going to key shot now. And you can see that this is what it looks like when it first comes in, okay? And then the image here in this session shows you the bike that I modeled in, in freestyle with, within Creo and what it looks like with the materials applied to it, okay? So to your left here in Keyshot, we have this panel and we have colors here, materials, textures, some environments that you can use or you know, preset environments for lighting your, your scene. We also have back plates. So basically what I've done is I've, I've come in here and said, hey, for example, you know, I wanna go ahead and see what a metallic orange looks like, right? So I can go over here to the paint section, metallic, and then find my orange color, select that, and, you know, drag that on the bike, right? Or it could be green, whatever, right? Um, you may say, hey, you know, I want to adjust the material maybe for the seat, right? So I can say, hey, you know what, let's go to leather, do a search and let's look at red. I can drag and drop and change that to, to red if I wanted, right? So that color scheme, you know, might not work too well with, with this green, but you get the idea. I can always go back and I can change that back to black. Okay. Um, you also have the ability to set up your different cameras in here, right? So you can see that we have this camera tab and we have camera one and we have camera two. So we can switch the perspective of, of what we're seeing here and you know create create new cameras so in that case i can go to my free camera here rotate a little bit come to this back view and say hey you know what i think i want to create a camera three for this back view so i can go ahead create that lock that in place and then save now i have not only camera one two but i have three as well we also have this um scene tree so the scene tree is kind of like your model tree in, in Creo, it has all your different parts, or in this case, surfaces that you've um, added. All right, you have your environment, and this is where you can adjust your lighting. Um, you can add ground shadows, reflections, and we have lighting options here. So in this case, this is a product, right? So I would use either basic or product to light this. Um, I would use those two settings, but if I wanted to, I can come in here and say, hey, you know, I want to use product, but I also want to adjust the settings and increase the quality of shadows or ray tracing bounces to increase the quality of the lighting, for example, right? So once you have all this here, you can see it's pretty quick. It's pretty easy to, to go in here and start to, you know, change your, your colors. And then when you want to render, you can go ahead to render and specify, you know, where you want to, you know, save your file tool to, to um, what file or format you want to save as, whether it's a PNG, JPEG, TIFF, or it's a Photoshop file. 
All right, that can all be done here. So um, yeah, so just wanna just you know, re recap what we took a look at. So really this is just using the freestyle environment in, in Creo to quickly conceptualize and create a um, model that you can create a, a render with. So um, ho hope you guys had a, a good look at, at this as far as seeing how powerful it is to quickly sculpt in here and um, create your shapes and then also be able to render that out within Keyshot. And what, one more thing as well that I didn't show, what's nice about Keyshot is that Keyshot also has plugins for SolidWorks and Creo. So if I wanna go directly from this part right here to, to Keyshot, if you have the plugin, um, you can go directly to this tab, the Keyshot 10 tab, for example, and say render. I wanna render directly from my Creo session to Keyshot. And what's nice is once that comes in here, once it imports from Creo, the key shot, if you go back to Creo and you make any changes to the parts, modify the shape of anything, all you have to do is go to the key shot 10, go to that plugin, go to update and update this assembly or this part with the models in it. And then when, when you do that, your key shot assembly will then update as well. So pretty powerful stuff. All right, so let's kind of switch back to the um, slides here. Um, if there's anything else that you want to learn about Creo and industrial design, um, this is a sample size of what we have to offer. Um, but if you want to learn more, we offer training um, in-house at PDS Vision US. Um, it could be on your site as well. And we also have the option to do it on the web virtually. So we can do that. Also, if you want to learn more, you can reach out to me directly at my email, bdrosos at pdsvision.us. Um, also, also feel free to concept, contact sales at pdsvision.us. We also have a ton of videos. So if you search for us online on YouTube, there's a ton of information there as well that you can kind of um, take information from and really learn a lot. So um, that's basically it for me. Um, if you guys have any questions, I'll. I'll leave you some time now to ask that. I'll give it just a little bit more time here for questions. Don't have anything coming in yet. And again, while we're waiting, just want to reiterate, you know, if there's anything about in, about in industrial design and Creo that you feel like you want to learn that you haven't seen here, feel free to send me an email or, or send an email to sales and uh, we'll get in touch with you and, and talk more. No questions? All right, okay, so let's close up. Thanks a lot for joining and I hope to hear more from you guys. Thanks.